second of our keynote speakers, Keiichi Namba. Uh, Keiichi has always been interested, he told me, in molecular motors, uh, but as, even from a graduate student, but he decided they were too tough initially, so he uh, instead solved the structure of tobacco mosaic virus as a postdoc with Don Casper and with Gerald Stubbs. After this period in the US, he came back to Japan and it was initially at uh, SCUBA uh, with an Arato project, then moved to the Panasonic Research Institute in Nara, and finally to Osaka University, where he's been a professor for many years. Keiichi's made very major contributions to our understanding of the structure of molecular motors, giving us new insights into mechanisms of force generation, assembly, and, and so on. And uh, it's with great pleasure that I hand over to him. I'm sure he's going to show us some uh, wonderful uh, structural work on these motors. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> well thank you, Peter, for kind, uh, kind introduction. And uh, I'd like to thank the uh, organizers, uh, Wall and Egon and Peter, for inviting me to uh, to this interesting, uh, exciting symposium. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here uh, to give a talk on the, uh, uh, our recent sort of work. Um, I'm a bit nervous because I, 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 I'm going to talk about something that uh, I haven't really uh, presented in, in, anywhere. Uh, inspired, inspired by uh, talks, uh, well, particularly uh, the first night uh, by Stephen and so on, I just made uh, sort of made up story that I, I want to tell you uh, tonight. And uh, so I just, the title was very vague, but uh, I, I just want to uh, tell you about how the structure of basis, uh, uh, structure information can tell us uh, the, uh, the dynamic uh, uh, property of the motor proteins, motor assemblies, uh, uh, as to how, how motor really works and, uh, in an uh, energy efficient way. So uh, this is uh, bacterial flagellum, uh, I mean uh, the bacterial swimming by, uh, by the flagellum and, uh, and this is um, the serum amorphogenesis motility by cytoskeleton, microtubules and actin and myosin motors, dynein motors are working actively and well, as you know, muscle is a highly uh, um, <coughs> organized uh, uh, structure of the cell, uh, cytoskeleton, that actin and myosin overlaps each other to uh, allow the myosin head to, uh, uh, to attach and detach on actin. Uh, through, through that repeated uh, association, dis dissociation process, the, the two filament slides and the sarcomere shrinks uh, so that we are uh, muscle uh, uh, contract. And uh, all these uh, uh, motors are sort of assembly of macromolecules, and there are always two components. And uh, you may think that, uh, well, many uh, people uh, uh, like to think that uh, the force is generated by the conformational change of, of uh, uh, proteins that are involved, like myosin, uh, in, the, in the case of myosin, actin. Um, the attachment and uh, detachment uh, uh, cycle is coupled with uh, ATP hydrolysis of myosin head. It, it, uh, myosin head is uh, S1 uh, head is uh, ATP uh, ACE. And, uh, and uh, people have been uh, finding many different conformations of myosin uh, in, under, uh, in, in different nucleotide uh, bound state and, and correlated uh, uh, to the uh, uh, the sort of cycle of uh, attachment detachment so that uh, uh, well so, uh, the conformation change of liver, uh, liver so the so called liver arm swing uh, would be a stroke power stroke to force and that's quite simple and attractive uh, to think of and, uh, and, and is, but is is it really really the case that's that's the question that I, I want to uh, address uh, tonight and uh, so many people think that muscle contraction is caused by mutual sliding of thick and thin filament, driven by conformational change of the myosin head attached on the actin, coupled with ATP hydrolysis. But um, um, many sort of uh, bacteria, uh, bacteria for bacterial swimming, it's 
uh, they use uh, rotary motor. And uh, um, dining, kinesing, and uh, uh, microtube motors are also two components. And also myosin actin are two components. There are always two proteins interacting each other and, and repeat, repeating the cycle of uh, association dissociation. And that, that's a sort of a common feature of the uh, motor assembly. And uh, um, uh, Osan Sensei, uh, our mentor, um, great mentor, uh, who is almost uh, 92 years old, uh, he proposed a loose coupling mechanism for torque generation of bacterial flagella uh, many years ago. And uh, also a thermal ratchet mechanism based on the Feynman's uh, thermal ratchet for muscle contraction. And it was also uh, quite at attractive, but it was really uh, difficult to uh, um, prove. But anyway, uh, the idea is that the thermal fluctuation in the, in the directional motion of protein and some asymmetry in the structure and the dynamics in the binding and release. Uh, it was actually I, um, proposed by Andrew Huxley many years ago for, for myosin act, um, act myosin interaction too. And uh, Toshio Yanagida, uh, <clears throat> uh, my old friend, and uh, 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 he, he used single molecule technique. He actually developed single molecule technique to observe the uh, um, uh, active myosin movement in, in a sort of some, uh, 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 directory to uh, visualize some some fluctuation uh, that is involved in the uh, uh, directional motion. And so maybe that's probably more realistic uh, view of what is really ha happening physically. So I just go through some uh, uh, structural uh, information uh, uh, of the three cases, uh, uh, flagell rotary motor and uh, uh, actomyosin and uh, dining motor uh, so that uh, they may, the structure may, and, and some dynamic uh, uh, information may tell us something uh, on, on that aspect. So, uh, Bakshia swims um, by heli uh, rotating helical filament like this. Uh, helical filament is called flagellum, and uh, the, uh, at the base, there is a rotary motor. Uh, by dis dissolving uh, uh, the membrane by detergent, we can see, we, we get to see the uh, uh, quite interesting structure uh, spanning through the membrane, outer membrane and out, uh, inner membrane. This is a bushing and rotor, and uh, there is a, a rotor and stator interaction uh, 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 driven by sort of uh, proton uh, 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 flow through the channel. And so that in, this, in this motor, the proton flow, uh, uh, proton uh, influx uh, through the stator channel is the uh, energy source. And uh, so somehow, the, uh, uh, um, this is, it doesn't have to be K, a K computer, but uh, uh, if you compare the man-made machine and the, uh, and the biological nano machine, uh, you can appreciate how, how small uh, the uh, uh, nano biological nano machine is. And uh, well, the LSI chip is made, uh, composed of uh, uh, ten, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of uh, 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 micro circuit uh, produce, produce, producing uh, zero and one signal, uh, and the size of the uh, a, a elementary circuit is uh, around this size, but uh, the nano machine uh, rotary motor is uh, even smaller than the, uh, uh, the size. And two, uh, um, it, it actually, uh, because it's small, it uses a very small amount of energy. Um, it, it rotates around 300 hertz or uh, with a sodium motor uh, for the sodium motor. It's, uh, it's, it's about 100,000 RPM, so it's quite fast motor. And because it's small, the, uh, it, it uses energy, very small amount of energy, uh, 10 to the uh, 10, minus 16 uh, watts, which is sub femto watt. Uh, unbelievably small energy can be utilized at very high efficiency, nearly 100%. And how, how can it be possible? Uh, uh, comparing to our membrane machine, uh, which is not really so efficient. Uh, and the typical comparison is this. The computer, uh, the high-speed computer uses uh, a very large amount of, uh, it requires a very uh, large uh, amount of power 
uh, like uh, uh, a million uh, watt, uh, well, actually 10 million watt for K computer to do, to, uh, to do the, uh, to carry out the very high accurate uh, teraflops, uh, petaflops computing. But uh, um, our brain, our brain uh, uses only 10, 10 20 watt, and uh, fly brain, uh, the tiny, tiny fly brain, uses only micro watt to uh, actually do a very sophisticated uh, information processing, like visual data processing and flight control to escape from your hand. So uh, uh, why um, is, is this uh, sort of uh, uh, quite, uh, a large order magnitude difference uh, can, can be possible by, by, by biological uh, um, a nanomachine, uh, so energy efficient. And one thing is uh, clear that uh, the computer requires, uh, well, computer circuitry uh, needs to move uh, 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 tens of thousands of electrons at one volt or two volt uh, to make one zero one signal. And, but um, the biological nanomachine can uh, use uh, one or two ions or even electron uh, for a meaningful uh, work. So even in, even in this uh, rotary motor, uh, one or two proton actually uh, is enough to uh, make a, a step motion. That, um, and, and so, uh, so energy efficiency is, uh, it, I mean, the, the, the so the structure based uh, atomic structure based uh, design of the of the how 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 energy is used is co completely different and and also some thermal fluctuation uh, is always there to, and and if computer needs to uh, put a lot of energy because it, it to in order to overcome the uh, noise thermal noise but the biological machine uh, probably use utilizes the thermal fluctuation in more uh, uh, actively way, uh, way, and that's why probably the, the such a large difference occurs. And uh, well, bacteria uh, swim. Uh, 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 well, some are equal. I uh, 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 the motor, a rotary motor of flagellum, yeah, uh, um, rotates clockwise, counterclockwise for for this uh, kind of behavior uh, to achieve the chemotaxis and thermotaxis, and. Uh, uh, switching of ro motor rotation uh, 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 causes the tumble, tumbling of, of the, uh, to, ch to allow the uh, directional change of the uh, swimming. And uh, uh, at the time of tumbling, uh, the flagellum uh, falls apart quickly, and uh, this involves a switching in the rotor mo motor rotation and also uh, switching in, in the morphological change of the uh, uh, helical, helical propeller from left-handed to right-handed. Uh, helical structure, and uh, th these are regulated by the uh, sort of a signal uh, transduction system, uh, sensing si sensing some uh, chem chem chemicals in the environment or pH or uh, uh, temperature. So what we can do uh, to observe the dynamic uh, dynamic behavior of the motor is that we can attach some uh, small bead, uh, gold bead or uh, plastic bead uh, on, on the hook or filament to monitor the rotation, and, and it's, it's kind of a single molecule observation technique. And by high, uh, tracking the uh, bead position at, uh, by a high-speed camera, we can uh, measure the speed of the uh, uh, ro ro uh, motor rotation as well as the switching uh, too, like this. And uh, what we've been uh, being able to show is that, uh, well, this pleasure motor actually is not a really continuous motor. It's a stepping motor uh, in, uh, in 205. So uh, uh, observed with a sodium, uh, a chimeric motor with sodium stator and, and uh, uh, E. coli uh, rotor uh, to uh, show that uh, it's a, it, uh, the rotor actually steps at 26 steps per revolution. And we, uh, we were able to show later that uh, it, the stepping motion is, is both ways. This is a time, and, uh, and this is a rotary, rotation angle. And the, as you can see, uh, the angle uh, steps every 14, uh, about 14 degree, and, and, and both ways, counterclockwise, clockwise. So the, 
14 degree. What is 14 degree? Uh, means it is the 26 uh, uh, steps per revolution, and it, it is it corresponds to the number of uh, um, uh, motor protein on the on the rotor particle. Uh, when we um, uh, uh, look at the structure of the vessel body uh, uh, by cryo microscopy, uh, this is end on view of the uh, rotor, and uh, uh, there are two. Uh, tip, uh, different symmetry, distinct symmetry, uh, rotary, uh, rotational symmetry on, on, on the uh, different part of the ring, but uh, we can actually find uh, 14 degree uh, 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 symmetry. Uh, so uh, this is phi G protein that uh, uh, interact with the uh, mot A, mot A B theta complex, and this is so, so uh, structure actually tells us how, how, why on uh, the uh, ro uh, mo fragile motor steps at every 14 degree. And so the, every uh, 14 degree, the state binds and release and then and, and just move. And uh, so that's how um, the rota, uh, the f f force is sort of generated. But how? Um, the state is made of uh, two protein, mot A and mot B. And uh, it's a, a, a small transmembrane uh, uh, channel complex. And it's anchored to the uh, peptide layer or uh, bushing, LP ring, too. And uh, uh, we solve the structure of uh, 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 peripheral domain, and, and that anchors to the uh, uh, pe uh, peptide glycan layer. And uh, uh, the, it's not, uh, uh, state of proteins, uh, uh, complex are not very stably attached to the motor and leak at the, uh, uh, found that uh, there, there are dynamic exchange between the pool of the uh, stator and, and attached stator. So multi AB complex uh, changes, uh, uh, exchanges um, dynamically uh, even during the motor rotation. And uh, well, anyway, um, we know the interaction with the important interaction between the multi AB stator complex with the uh, uh, rotor protein phi G and uh, by, by mutation experiment. And there are some charge charging uh, electrostatic interactions involved. And uh, um, some charging uh, in, uh, electrostatic interactions are uh, important for assembly of the, of the stator to the motor. Some of them are uh, important for actually torque generation. So uh, the, there, are, there is a uh, sort of binding uh, bound state and uh, a weak binding state and a strong binding state. And uh, what uh, this experiment, well, when we remove, what, what happens when we remove the uh, delete uh, mod AB complex from the from motor? So this is a sort of a trajectory uh, of a bead that we observe. Uh, um, this is showing a kind of random uh, summer diffusion of the uh, of the bees, so the motor rotate uh, quite freely, but uh, and um, uh, without without stator. And the speed, when we analyze the speed of the of the sum of diffusion rotation, uh, max, maximal speed is about 250 hertz, which is which corresponds to the max, nearly the maximum speed of the uh, uh, motor itself when, uh, with uh, with uh, um, mot AV uh, stator complex attached. So that means that. Maybe uh, um, the uh, stator complex attach on, attached to the uh, uh, phi G, uh, 26 phi G, each of them uh, along the circumference, but still uh, only when, if, if the detachment or attachment uh, dynamics is, is biased with the structural asymmetry, and then uh, the the rest of the, energy, the uh, thermal energy, thermal fluctuation, uh, can actually drive the rest of the uh, 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 directional motion, and uh, it doesn't have to be the case, uh, the way that the uh, motor uh, changes its conformation uh, 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 actively to to generate the force, but the thermal diffusion uh, is enough to explain uh, how how the Directional motion uh, is uh, produced by a sort of biased thermal motion. So that that's one uh, case that uh, uh, we we can 
sort of uh, the, what, that's one clue that we uh, the motor how motor works. And uh, well, the filament. Um, uh, so for for the for the chemical behavior, uh, we we uh, uh, the, the filament helical filament has to uh, be switch, switching uh, uh, the conformation from left-handed to right-handed, and uh, Asakura-san uh, and Kamiya-san found uh, that. Uh, it, it can be in a straight form, and th there are two straight forms uh, that representing the two state of, of the uh, uh, flagellin that uh, com uh, composed the helical form. And uh, uh, so Asakura-san's idea was that uh, there, there must be two different periodicity uh, in the two state that uh, uh, generate the curvature. And uh, by analyzing the two state uh, uh, straight filament, we we actually see the uh, some very small but distinct difference, and uh, that explains the how how the helical left-handed, the right-handed helical form forms. So we we actually, uh, uh, with the help of uh, Yoshinori Fujiyoshi, who developed the uh, liquid helium cr uh, cold cryo electron microscope, we looked at the structure uh, of the filament, straight filament, two straight filament, and uh, well, in the beginning, I. Well, I, I was excited to start this uh, project 20 some years ago, and uh, but uh, as soon as we started, I was sort of disappointed because the the uh, cryo image is very poor, and uh, I wasn't really. Uh, I thought it would it would be very difficult to see the atoms or some amino amino acid from from these images. But still, I mean, uh, the cryo image is, is something like that. Uh, the, just uh, because of the low, low dose, uh, uh, the random noise is added on, on the signal now, and uh, by averaging many, many images, we can, you can recover. The idea is you can recover the high resolution feature by averaging many images. And so as, at least we can see something, uh, and the Fourier transform shows uh, exactly the same sort of pattern, a, a diffraction pattern that the X-ray diffraction from the liquid crystalline sample shows. From many many filaments, so we started uh, doing image analysis, uh, helical image analysis, nearly 20 years ago, and then uh, increased the number to uh, uh, to see the more detail. Um, and finally, uh, in about 10 years ago, by averaging uh, uh, 40 about 40,000 uh, molecular images, we we, we got uh, we started to see some side chains and and build. Was a, a, we are able to build uh, atomic complete atomic model of their type R type uh, uh, filament and see the switching and so I was quite happy to uh, uh, see also the switching involved in the uh, periodicity change uh, for for the two state uh, was visualized by some simulation too so I was quite happy to see this but uh, the thing was that uh, um, it took. Uh, Several years of work, uh, very intensive work, to uh, visualize the complete uh, uh, structure of the the whole filament. So we started uh, about 10 years ago. We started uh, using putting in more devices like energy filter, and instead of using uh, uh, f uh, film, we started using uh, uh, a CCD camera, which wasn't really a high res high resolution detector uh, compared to the film, but still. Um, uh, energy filter was very powerful, reducing the noise, background noise uh, from el in elastic scattered electron, and uh, uh, so the, uh, the very uh, uh, coarse sort of um, noisy image became very smooth uh, to make the alignment uh, image alignment more accurate. And uh, by tuning this uh, uh, bit of device to make uh, uh, we, we were able to pro reproduce the uh, very thin ice, which, uh, uh, which is important for uh, uh, producing high, high contrast images. And also, uh, although the very low temperature for Kelvin uh, liquid helium temperature was uh, important for uh, reducing the damage quite a bit, uh, but uh, it caused many uh, problems of charging and so on. So. We, and also the density of ice was high. Uh, some, some, uh, in some uh, space spaces, uh, found that uh, the low, low uh, temperature uh, uh, ice is high density, and, and 
So the difference between the protein density in the, and ice was uh, uh, small, than, smaller than that we, uh, we, were ho we, uh, we hoped for. So we uh, elevated the temperature to around 50K, above 30K, the transition temperature. And then, um, so uh, by, by doing that, we, ha we, we gained some contrast, uh, high contrast too. So uh, by multiplying all those uh, uh, contrast gain uh, by energy filtering and, and thin ice and temperature, uh, 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 elevated temperature, it can uh, multiply up to about five times, uh, which is quite a uh, um, um, uh, good number to uh, make the uh, al alignment accuracy much higher. And even better news was that uh, at 4 Kelvin, uh, we were able to use only, uh, only a very few uh, uh, images uh, out of many uh, 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 film image, uh, uh, images, but uh, at 50 Kelvin, above 30 Kelvin, we were able to use almost all the images for, for the, uh, the image analysis. So it made the data processing and, and image reconstruction much, much faster. And with the help of Ada Egerman, uh, we were able to automate all the whole processing. So we tried this uh, uh, technique to look at uh, uh, hook structure. And uh, uh, at, at in, in the original work, we used X-ray crystallography. We, we used the hybrid method, uh, combining X-ray crystallography uh, of subunit with the uh, uh, low, low resolution cryo EM work. Uh, it was in collaboration with David Rogers' lab. Uh, the TAPU spent a couple of years to produce 15 Youngstrom uh, map of the hook, and then we just docked cri our crystal structure into the uh, uh, into the his map uh, to produce this uh, uh, model of the hook uh, to see how universal joint motion can be achieved by by the hook protein. And uh, so um, it was nice to see how how the pro hook protein can be elongated or compressed to, to, to make the uh, bending flexibility, uh, high bending flexibility. But anyway, um, we, um, so we tried this method for, for, for the hook experiment. And Takashi, uh, at that time, he was a student, graduate student in the lab. He, tried, he used, he improved uh, all the method and, uh, with Taka uh, Yukikato. And uh, he was able to produce this uh, quite nice map at seven Armstrong resolution visualizing all the secondary structures within, within just three days, one day data collection and two day uh, data Im image processing. And so it was very nice uh, that uh, uh, a few years work became uh, only a few days work. And, uh, and, and the structure actually shows quite in, uh, a lot of information uh, like uh, uh, how, why the fragiling filament is rigid and uh, similar, quite similar uh, uh, shape of the molecule uh, pack, packed in a similar, similar way uh, into hook, why the hook is so flexible. There is just a subtle change in, in the packing, actual packing, uh, makes the mechanical property quite different. And so it was about, I thought it was about time to uh, apply this method for, for the actin uh, uh, structure uh, that I was, uh, I, I wanted to, uh, to look at so badly when I was a graduate student. And uh, so um, um, he, uh, we, we actually just went one upstairs uh, where Toshio was uh, having love. And we, uh, he, 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 he's been working on muscle uh, protein for a long time, so he had uh, uh, actin uh, uh, stock in, in the fridge. So we got about 20 microliter of actin, G-actin solution, and Takashi polymerized it and, and collected some images uh, 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 over a couple of days. And then he was able to produce this map, uh, a very nice map. So this, what this is doing is it's uh, uh, compare, uh, docking uh, the G-actin crystal structure into the F-actin map. Uh, and, uh, so each domain can be fitted quite nicely, but this uh, domain two, D loop, uh, has to be unfolded to make, make it in, uh, into loop. And this was actually uh, uh, only two days data collection and two days image analysis. Again, they, uh, just about a week of work, and they, I was really surprised and happy to see this uh, uh, work. 
Well, and comparing the uh, G acting, F acting, we can actually uh, 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 have quite uh, important insight of how, how the uh, uh, asymmetric polymerization occurs in, in, in the uh, polymerization to depolymerization occurs in the actin filament. Uh, actin, uh, as you may, uh, many of you know, actin goes through uh, treadmilling and polymerizing in one direction and depolymerizing this way. Uh, uh, the other direction, and, and that's a uh, uh, very important process in, in cell, uh, uh, cell motility and morphogenesis. And uh, this can be actually explained by uh, the very asymmetric structure of the uh, filament. Uh, this, the clue is uh, the same. The uh, fragile filament glow, glow only in, in one direction because uh, on this side, on this side, it, uh, the structure is well defined so that uh, the coming in uh, uh, fragile molecule can attach. But this part is uh, very uh, disordered uh, in monomer form or even at the, uh, this uh, uh, proximal end. So the uh, another uh, fragile cannot come in to attach uh, this way. And uh, in the same way, uh, at the barbed end uh, of actin filament, the, the structure is well defined this way. So the coming in actin, adding actin, uh, can go through the, uh, these changes uh, uh, of uh, domain motion uh, coupled with the, uh, uh, the loop formation to attach uh, quite easily. So, but uh, on the other hand, on the other side, at the, at the pointed end, um, at the pointed end, this loop uh, is, uh, is actually going through uh, the helix, helix loop transition quite, uh, quite dyna dynamically. And the coming in actin, adding actin has to go through uh, this domain motion too. So there are, uh, the two event has to, two independent, uh, uh, two independent event has to occur simultaneously. That's why the polymerization uh, uh, to, to the uh, uh, pointed end is much slower. And, and so that's why the treadmilling occurs and to achieve this kind of uh, uh, cell movement and motility. But anyway, um, so in this case, we, we actually uh, uh, looked at S1 attached uh, uh, actin. And uh, um, so, so this is the F1, S1, myosin S1 decorated actin. Um, and uh, it wasn't really easy because it, the, uh, in the cryo grid uh, pr preparation, the uh, 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 Myosin S1 detached quite easily, but still uh, somehow uh, Takashi spent uh, nearly half a year to uh, uh, um, optimize the condition where uh, to, to look at this uh, uh, S1 decorated, fully decorated actin structure. And uh, this, by comparing the uh, uh, LIGO complex, uh, S1 uh, attached to, an S, uh, to F actin with the crystal structure. Uh, so this large conformation actually occurs upon ATP binding, and uh, some uh, steric uh, crashes occurs upon ATP binding uh, 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 that causes this conformational change. That's why upon ATP binding, uh, S1 uh, is detached, uh, detaches from the effector, and then. Uh, ATP is hydrolyzed, and then uh, uh, again uh, S1 can attach on attach to the uh, uh, F actin. So uh, this conformational change uh, uh, actually causes some to to cause, uh, to uh, drive the uh, detachment of actin, and we can we we get m uh, quite a lot of information uh, on on the how S1 attaches on uh, actin surface. And uh, I'm not going to detail uh, uh, because it's not the point of, uh, uh, of this talk. But uh, anyway, uh, there are some uh, changes in conformation of actin too, the upon binding. And, uh, but anyway, uh, it was interesting to see the map uh, because the head part is well defined, but the tail part is very poor. And, uh, I thought that something must, well, well, the naive, sort of, in the in naive interpretation is that there must be flexible. Uh, the tail part must be flexible enough to uh, 
uh, to, uh, to smell the density. But when I sort of lower the control level, I was able to see a very interesting feature of, of myosin tail. There are two states. It wasn't really just a flexible feature, but there, was, there were two states, two uh, distinct states uh, uh, in, in one uh, sort of uh, uh, filament. And we, we, I, we tried to classify uh, if the, uh, the, the structure, two structures, uh, uh, if, if the, some cooperative uh, uh, conformation, uh, conformation uh, segregation occurs. But it's, it's quite random. And so the so myosin head can have uh, two, con two conformation, quite different conformation in, in a sort of uh, equally, uh, 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 in a so nearly equal free energy state, uh, 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 level. So, uh, and this is sort of, uh, uh, part, of part of the labor um, uh, uh, swing. And so this means that uh, uh, it's not really a labor um, uh, uh, swing uh, to uh, produce a stroke, but uh, maybe an asymmetric uh, uh, binding and, and dissociation association process uh, and in sort of dynamical way is will be the uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, cause of directional sort of motion by thermal, thermal fluctuation, one dynamic. So one directional thermal fraction always occur with a probably with a weak binding, but uh, 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 ATPS coupled uh, strong binding and release will be uh, 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 sort of uh, regulated in terms of uh, uh, which way which way to release, which way to uh, to be more stable, and and that's how the uh, directional motion can be can be achieved uh, using the thermal uh, uh, energy of thermal fractions very efficiently. The, uh, the, the last part is that uh, it's a dining motor, microtube motor. It's a, uh, it's a uh, work by uh, Muto-san, Riken, uh, and uh, Uchimura, Seichi Uchimura, and Takazaki, and, and Takashi Fuji, uh, the uh, people who, who did the work. Uh, um, Uchimura-san uh, did the gliding assay of, of Daini. Daini is a microtube based motor with AT, AAA ATPs and uh, microtube binding domain uh, connected to stock. And uh, stock is the, uh, supposed to be the signal transduction uh, uh, part that upon empty uh, binding uh, domain, uh, uh, microtube binding domain attachment um, to the uh, tubing microtube, uh, it causes a signal, uh, transmit a signal to uh, Structure sort of uh, change to a uh, AAA domain to cause the uh, regulate the ATP ATP hydrolysis, and uh, he did the uh, uh, they did the gliding assay, uh, put the dining motor on the on the glass sheet, and then uh, observed the uh, gliding motion of the microtube, and the wild wild type motor uh, glide in, uh, directionally quite quite smoothly, but. Uh, uh, they found, mute, they found uh, some mutation in alpha tubing, uh, uh, arginine 43 and uh, glutamic acid 416. They, uh, they, um, uh, they didn't go show any directional motion, but showed uh, uh, fluctuation, bidirectional fluctuation. And uh, so, it, it, and the bidirectional fluctuation is, is quite long distance. It's over one, one mic long. Uh, 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 within uh, uh, 10 second, 20 second range. And uh, so we looked at the structure of the uh, uh, complex and uh, uh, unfortunately we didn't see high resolution well, partly due to uh, uh, low uh, occupancy and uh, uh, unstable binding. But anyway, um, we identified uh, two sort of bridges of, of, uh, uh, that involve, uh, involving uh, two uh, amino acid, glutamic, glutamic acid 416 and uh, arginine 403 that uh, they identified by uh, in the mutag mutagenesis assay uh, and the gliding assay. And uh, so th those are very important uh, 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 residues that involved in the strong binding state. So the strong binding state uh, well, is necessary for, for directional motion. And, uh, and uh, just quickly going through the structure, 
uh, uh, we, we were able to uh, fit uh, the molecule uh, crystal, uh, starting from the crystal structure and, and, and uh, 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 refine the structure based on the map. It's, it wasn't really uh, very high resolution, but still we were able to see some structural change that may uh, 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 transmit the signal to the uh, triplicate domain upon, upon strong binding uh, with two solid bridges. And, uh, and interestingly enough, the uh, my surface of the microtube is highly negative. It's an electrostatic potential. And the uh, dining um, uh, uh, head uh, microtube binding domain is uh, highly positive. And uh, there is uh, always a weak uh, binding state uh, uh, that allows the uh, uh, dining microtube, uh, microtube binding domain to, to diffuse one in, uh, in one direction. Uh, 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 both way, but um, when the uh, wire type motor comes in uh, at some point, uh, it can go through uh, uh, strong binding at some point. And so, um, so this um, mutation uh, experiment tells what mu this mutation tells us is that uh, if the if there are strong uh, if there are no strong binding state. Uh, the motor goes through only weak uh, uh, binding, uh, so the sort of unidirectional motion uh, uh, in a random, motion, random way, a uh, both direction. But uh, once uh, the once the the salt bridge is formed and to to form the strong binding state, the probably the release, releasing uh, 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 dynamics or kinetics is, is asymmetric, structurally is asymmetric, to uh, allow only uh, 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 high probability uh, uh, release in, in one direction in, during the thermal motion. So uh, uh, again, in this case, uh, the uh, thermal fluctuation is the energy source, and only the uh, structural asymmetry or uh, uh, dynamics asymmetry in the, in the, in the Binding the release would be uh, to, uh, the cause of regulation of the directional motion uh, or bias motion. So I, I hope I, can, I, I, I hope I, can, I could convince you that uh, the dynamics, uh, as, well, structure is important, but uh, also the so the uh, asymmetry in, in dynamics is also important for for the motor function. Oh, I don't have time to. Uh, uh, go through this. I, I, I thought I would uh, entertain you by a uh, very interesting sort of structure of the fragile motor that uh, uh, magnet bacteria M1 uh, from Mediterranean Sea uh, 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 has, but uh, well, it, um, uh, well, it that allows the very, very fast uh, 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 swimming, 10 times faster than the Salmura uh, it, uh, but uh, I, I don't think I, uh, I have time to explain this. So uh, well, just one last sort of message that uh, uh, about, about 10 years ago at the Golden Conference, Ken Downing asked, uh, invited me to uh, give a keto, keynote talk and asked me to uh, 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 predict 10 years away uh, from, uh, on the cryo uh, development. And uh, that I thought that the target would be uh, 2D, two Armstrong uh, resolution for 2D crystal, crystal, uh, crystallography and uh, uh, three Armstrong for uh, 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 filament structure, tubular crystal, and uh, four Armstrong single particle and six Armstrong several granular by tomography. Well, actually, uh, only uh, on that, uh, uh, soon after the Golden Conference, I found out that the two Armstrong resolution was achieved by 4 0 by Yoshi and uh, Thomas Bout and uh, uh, Tamiya Gonen. And uh, well, now, but now the three young uh, resolution is uh, quite, quite uh, 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 sort of uh, a general standard, uh, became a general standard for, for uh, helical structure. And even single, single particle uh, uh, analysis uh, uh, allows the uh, beyond forms from structure quite, quite in many uh, systems. And uh, well, uh, maybe tomography will be still difficult. But this development, I, uh, at that time, I, I said that the camera is, is the uh, only problem. Uh, and the camera 
uh, uh, quality was very poor in the in the in this uh, uh, MTF or DQE uh, plot. And but because of the K2 and Falcon camera uh, development, which was predicted uh, already at, uh, nearly at, uh, uh, a few several years ago, uh, the the detector allowed uh, a very nice high quality images to to be collected quite. Uh, quickly, and uh, uh, so that allow that uh, that that is uh, actually a driving force of the high resolution QIM uh, image analysis. And uh, with the uh, toning, it's the structural information of, of uh, in the reciprocal space. The toning going out to nearly two Armstrong uh, with titan, either titan or uh, a geo microscope. We uh, we hope that uh, we can uh, achieve. Uh, visualization of a uh, uh, second structure uh, from from within a week to uh, atomic resolution within a week uh, uh, very soon and uh, so I hope uh, I, uh, I I would like to thank people who involved who are involved in the uh, in the work uh, Takashi Fuji uh, Takayuki Kato and Tomoko Miyata all those people are involved in. Uh, did the uh, uh, cryo work in, in our lab. And uh, many extra studies were done by those people, including Imanda san. And uh, motor rotation work was done by Shuichi Nakamura, Koichi uh, Hiraoka, uh, uh, the student, uh, ex student and student, uh, with Toru Minamino, uh, who has been with us for a long time. The affecting S1 work was uh, with, in collaboration with Toshio Yanagida and uh, uh, Atsuko Iwane. And, uh, uh, dining work was uh, uh, with uh, uh, Ushimura-san, Takadaki-san, and Muto-san in Riken uh, Brain Science Institute. And uh, we had a lot of help uh, uh, with, uh, uh, for, for software development by the Eggman. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Eiji. It's a uh, really nice, lucid, and beautiful presentation. And as somebody who's old enough to have seen the low-resolution images we had of these motors and of actinomycin, et cetera, um, it's just fantastic to see how the new technologies have uh, led to a molecular level understanding of these structures. So it's time for questions. Okay. Uh, Mr. Namba, uh, as to my knowledge, uh, because of the helical uh, symmetry, the, this kind of uh, tubular uh, sample, you only have to take one picture or several pictures uh, because you have uh, all 360 degree of every subunit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed that you uh, even men mentioned the, uh, uh, the, av the picture averaging. And then I, I, I want to know why you still need to take so many uh, pictures of the sample. Uh, because it's individual images are so in, so noisy uh, due to a statistical noise, uh, we can use only very small amount of uh, electrons. Uh, so it's like just taking picture in the dark place. So the images, no, low images, are very noisy okay. because of the statistical noise, oh. and we you need to um, average to cancel out noise and, and pile up signals, accumulate signal to get high, recover high resolution uh, uh, signal. You, you just want to raise the SNR? SNR, the yes. Yeah. Okay. Signal okay. to noise ratio. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That's right. Keiichi, do you think that the um, amount of torque that a bacterial flagellar motor can generate, um, do you think that's proportional to the diameter? Uh, yeah, I think so. so because it's so the, 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 uh, so the, the, the diameter of the rotor. Mm, yes. Okay. Well, the torque is, uh, is uh, mo the fo force times ra radius. So diame if the diameter is large, then the torque is, yeah, oh, becomes large. Sense. Yeah. Jane? This is, uh, is, is, is very, very interesting. But I think I, I, what I'd like to ask you is, um, isn't there a qualitative difference between the rotary motor of the, of the flagellum and the actin and myosin, because the f rotary motor really has only one um, piece of motor, whereas the 
the uh, myosin and actin, there's a lot of, of molecules uh -huh. doing the stroke. Uh -huh. And so would you like to comment perhaps on... Well, ro even rotary the, motor has 11 stators. Well, yes, but that's not as many as, as all of those. Yeah, uh, that's uh, true. My, but my actomyosin motor, uh, well, and myosin too uh, uh, is not really a processive motor, but some, some uh, linear motor, yeah. protein, mm -hmm. are, are processive enough to, uh, for, for the single molecule to, to uh, carry on one directional motion on, on the track. I guess what I'm really trying to get a sense of is you're going to have to have a very large number of, I guess, rather weak interactions to do that. And they've all got to be in the same direction. Uh -huh. So the directionality on the actin and myosin is going to be qualitatively different from the, from um, the rotation. Well, I think the, even in the single molecule base, the, well, uh, some, some sort of uh, motion uh, is when, if the sum of motion is regulated by the, uh, the repeated cycle of strong binding and weak binding, then, uh, well, actually, the, the, even the myosin, uh, uh, myosin can go through some distance uh, of what you need one directional motion on actin. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's maybe qualitatively different, but, uh, well, quant Quantitatively different, but qualitatively speaking, the process, physical, so the elementary physical process involved in the, in, in the in the in the so uh, uh, utilization uh, efficient utilization of thermal energy would be the same probably. So, would you think of it as perhaps as an amplification of the direction? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. With having so with having so many yes motors, yes, I think so. Jamie. So I have uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, one is, uh, is it understood why that myosin tail wags only into those two conformations off of there and not, it doesn't seem to be anything really holding it back from sampling <laughs> many, many more. And the second is more trivial, who does your movies? Who does the movies? <laughs> okay. Well, the movie is done by professional people who uh, we uh, asked, uh, we found uh, in Tokyo. Uh, who, who, uh, he, they, they do commercial film uh, usually, and, uh, but uh, some, well, we found uh, people who, who, uh, uh, who were willing to spend some time with uh, much less money that they asked for usually. <laughs> so that was a professional one. Um, my interesting tale, uh, I think the, the confirmation of protein, uh, well, some Proteins are very, uh, go through quite random motion. Well, some disordered protein, uh, partially disordered protein have random motion, but uh, um, probably the, the neck region or liver uh, domain of myosin tail is, is, is relatively well defined enough to have multiple sort of distinct conformation. Yeah, and so it's not completely uh, 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 disordered or random uh, uh, structure. That's, is that answer, does that answer your question? Well, I guess what, is it just that that, that that lever can only adopt those two conformations further in, or there, do you understand what's stabilizing specifically? Ah, those well, two? we don't really understand how, what stabilizes it yet. Uh, we need to uh, look into more uh, detail uh, in that mixed structure, uh, I think, yeah. Another question at okay, the back. Uh, general question. So one is that, uh, so uh, how do, I just want to know how the flagellar rotation motion, yes, uh, determine all the, the bacterial movement direction. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, okay, let's ask the second. The second one is, uh, see in the movie, the, the bacteria have several flagellar. Uh -huh. Okay, does it coordinate? Yeah. Coordinated to make the yes. yeah, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, bacterial uh -huh. uh, movement. Yeah. Right. And the second question, uh, the E. coli somewhere has several flagella, uh, and the motor rotate individually, uh, independently, but uh, some kind of fluid dynamic interaction of the helical uh, proper uh, 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 coordinate actually the rotation and synchronization. And uh, the first one was how, how do the bacteria uh, 
change this swimming direction? How the flagellar rotation determine the, the bacterial movement direction? Um, yeah. Well, the, oh, it just uh, uh, provide the, the counterclockwise yeah. rotation of the left-handed Higgs uh, 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 produce a, a, a thrust to to move forward. So it's a it's a mechanical, purely mechanical, yeah, me mechanism. It was a nice, very nice, beautiful talk. Oh, just one question. That I noticed you showed this energy field the image of uh, filament. It's, the contrast has dramatically improved. Uh -huh. And do you s how thick is the ice? Is that because the ice is uh, very thick? Or, uh, no, how no, big no. Is the uh, well, if the ice is thick, you don't see tone ring or image. That's, that's right? what I was saying. And uh, well, you, usually, this, that was 200 kilovolt, but uh, um, well, actually, Bob Gray's always complain me about uh, to to tell the thickness of ice uh, of, of the specimen. Um, we uh, the criteria we use is about uh, uh, 20 30 percent of the uh, 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 electron uh, is eliminated by by filter. So uh, um, the so that well, we we can calculate the uh, from the mean mean free pass. We can calculate the thickness, but I, I, I don't have the number at the moment. So the, the, it's related, not the related to this is that when, when people use this uh, energy field for the single particle, uh -huh. they often don't observe such a huge improvement in the, in the image contrast. I'm just curious about uh, what you thought about why. I think it, quite a lot of people, <laughs> have you tried on the single well, particle? Well, we, we, well, not just the film, we, we looked at the base of the body and so other, other single particles. It's also very very obvious, I see. Yeah, Thanks. we see quite dramatic uh, improvement in signal to noise ratio. Yeah, that's why I kept saying that uh, should, people should use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that since we have a reception and a banquet in about 15 minutes, we should stop at this point and thank Keiichi for a really fabulous and very beautiful talk. Thank you.